My name is Tammy Joya, and I'm an advocate for children with special needs. And Hi, Michelle. How are you? Uh, today, uh, hopefully, we're going to talk about some things, but I just want to know how everybody is, and make sure you guys are all safe and you're not listening to the news as far as, you know, everything's okay, everything's not okay. It's not good, except there was some good news today <laughs> regarding the president. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm really happy about so anyhow hey Paula hi so what's been going on with everybody uh, I heard some stuff that I just I was livid today I was so angry um, that I had to uh, make a phone call <laughs> to you know our state representative uh, governor I mean representative Casey Democrat and I had to tell him a few things about being stupid uh, because it's all about our kids going back to school. Yeah, in September, like nothing's going on. Yeah, our kids going to school, public school, classroom full of kids. Teachers been complaining for years and years and years about um, how big the classes are. And so now the classes are gonna be small. This is gonna be a neat trick. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see how teachers are going to school knowing that the public school system is a giant Petri dish. I don't understand why this is okay with anybody. I, I don't even have a child in public school and I'm so angry right now I could just spit. I'm telling you, this is, this is just awful. I don't understand why it's okay for them to do this. It's just the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't get it. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. But anyhow, I was angry today and um, I don't know, I guess I've been looking up some stuff and I've been hearing some things about, you know, how most of the states don't even have a plan for our kids to go back to school. And that's typical kids. That's just kids in general. So, I mean, I don't know how they're going to provide kids with special needs any kind of program. I, I don't understand. And I think what we need to do is we need to pick up the phone. And we need to start making calls like I did today to Casey and let him have it. Feeling strong. Kids educate. That's right. I'm telling you, that's good. Feeling strong. I'm feeling mad. <laughs> I'm feeling pissed. What I just heard today is not good. It's not good for any of our kids. I mean, they're talking about, you know, and some some states are doing some things that make a little bit of sense. Like kids are going to school, half the kids will go one day, half go the other, and the half that doesn't go will get virtual learning and stuff like that. Now that makes sense to me. What we have to understand is that the normal that we had before is no longer exists. I mean, we are susceptible f for viruses like this in our country. I mean, we just do all kind of crazy stuff to the environment. People just don't care anymore. Uh, feeling strong, going good, reading well, got four hours, hit per day, reading OG 101 for the summer Zoom. Cool. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I like to hear. But you know what I really want to know? I want to know what they're going to do when we go back to school. Okay, good. What I want to know is what are they going to do when our kids go back to school? Because we can't go into school half-baked. Okay, some kids going to school half a day, some kids, I mean, some kids going to school, some kids staying home. And the kids that stay home, what kind of program do they have? You know, uh, because it's real easy to do, people. I know, And I know everybody's got to work. I get it. I do. I get it. But are we really going to send our kids to school without a plan? I mean, what the president is suggesting is totally cray-cray. I mean, it's batshit crazy. I'm not kidding. It's like, we'll just kill all the kids, and if we don't kill them, then we'll definitely be able to kill their parents. And then what's going to happen? This, these are the questions that we have to look at, and we have to look at them now because, you know what pissed me off? What pissed me off is the Congress acted as if the fall wasn't coming and school was never going to start. I don't understand why when they took the kids out of school in March, why this wasn't a big discussion back then. I don't get it. I don't get why this wasn't a discussion about what's going to happen in the fall. Forget the rest of the school year. Let's just start planning for the fall. Because if this keeps going as crazy as it is, our kids aren't going to school in the fall. And I mean, that's as simple as it gets. So, I mean, they weren't going back to school before. So I don't understand why they don't. This is what pisses me off about Congress and our representatives. And because they don't want to do anything. They just don't. They want to sit on their hands, wring their hands out and act like they're crazy good um free tonight oh you are michelle okay i'm glad you guys can hear me i'm on a rant today i don't care <laughs> i'm mad as hell um okay my kids are going if they don't have a good plan my kids are not go good michelle that's what i wanted to hear 
Because I truly believe if all of the parents just put their foot down and say, I don't care about my job. I, I don't care because I had a plan. You know what my plan was? For parents who work, but they don't work in an office and they work, you know, they work in retail, for instance. You work in stop and you work in stop and shop, or you work in Walmart, or you work in a retail store of some sort. Well, I don't see why they don't just pay the parents to stay at home, as and and the parents can become the paraprofessionals to make sure that the kids are doing the schoolwork and to make sure that the teachers are actually showing up and not some PowerPoint presentation. See what I'm saying? And if the teacher doesn't show up, then we can alert the school. Hey, teacher didn't show up today. I got a PowerPoint presentation instead of actual academics with the teacher sitting there in front of us. You see, this is what I'm talking about. I think, I, I, Michelle says, I think they think we will just go. That's right, they do. Especially like way over there in Congress in D.C., they actually think that. Just because that person in office says everybody should go to school. Everybody's supposed to go to school. You know what really just went up my tiny sideways is that he actually, he said the same thing about your kids going to school that he said about opening up all of these states. And within two weeks, every single one of the states that reopened skyrocketed with coronavirus. Now he's trying to say, that kids are immune to coronavirus. Are you kidding me with that right now? Of course you didn't get an education, honey. I know. This is what I'm talking about. What we need to do is figure out what we're going to do during COVID-19. We need to figure out our plan because we can't leave it up to them because they're stupid. The school people are stupid. The, and I don't blame the teachers. I, if I was a teacher, shoot, I'd be thinking about another career right about now. Okay, because I'm not putting my life in danger because some little kid came to school because a parent had to go to work and the kid's sick. You know how many parents do that? We're all guilty of doing that. We got to go to work. We need to talk. Okay, honey. Call me. <laughs> Call me, girl. <laughs> Everybody, I look over there and I look down a lot. It's because I'm reading your stuff while I'm talking to you. But, um, yeah, so I think that we should put together suggestions and we should send them to our congressmen because they clearly don't know what to do because you know why all of their kids are going to private schools <laughs> there's very few of them going to public okay if you have any kind of a brain your congressman is not sending their kids to a public school the congressman after all you know they're targets so i would definitely do that what i would like is for Everybody, Maurice, hi girl, I didn't even know to see your name there. It's way at the top of the screen, I can barely see it. A typical child to get a virus. Yeah, can you imagine? Because you know what, guys? Here's the thing, this is why I'm pissed. It's not enough that our children have disabilities and, and it's hard for them to get an education as it is. Now, you're gonna, now we're gonna couple that with giving them a virus or making them, putting them in harm's way. We're just gonna do that to them. Because we don't have anything else to do. You know what I told my boss one time? I worked for a company called GMAC back in the day. And uh, my boss was under the impression that um, if my kid was sick, I was supposed to leave him at home. My kid had asthma. He also had ADD. But my kid had asthma. And he had it bad. And this fool actually thought, I had to turn around and I had to say to him, let me ask you a question. When, you st when, you when your kids are sick, who stays home with them? He said, my wife does. Oh, your wife? Good. Just so we understand each other, I told him. Don't ever, ever, ever make me choose between this raggedy ass piece of shit company. I actually said that to him. And my son. Because guess, just take a wild guess. Who's going to win? It ain't this school. It, I mean, it is not just job. I will walk out that door in 10 seconds flat. I don't care nothing about this job. I love my kid. I will stand in front of a bullet for my kid. For you, not so much. For this stupid company, I don't care. Because I can get this stupid job anywhere. I can get this. It wasn't like I was, you know, a scientist or anything. Or I worked for some big, huge corporation. And, you know, I was, I was a CEO of something. I was a cork. I pushed paper. I did renewals. I didn't care anything about I could get this job, I told him. Anywhere in the industry. Are you kidding me with that right now? Michelle, I am also using dry infrared sauna for my feelings. <laughs> you ain't playing, girl. Oh, I love you. Um, the kids get nine minutes. It detox, kills off bacteria, viruses, and fungus. No proof it kills. 
COVID, but I have to do something. The hospitals might make a snap decision not to treat. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we got it because this is what we have to do. What I've learned over the last few months is that the people in this country, we're not stupid. Okay, we will stand up and fight if you push us hard enough. And we've had it up to here with everybody taking our lives into their own hands and screwing it up and twisting it around and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We're done. And I don't understand how many protests have to be seen before they get it. Apparently, they need more. I don't, I don't know what they're looking for. But we have to take things into our own hands and we have to take care of the problem because they're not going to. They're just going to subject our children to all kinds of nonsense. The teachers, if your kid goes to school and he doesn't get the virus, he could come home and give it to you though. So you you get sick. You're the you're the you're a single parent. This is these are the things I think of that I lost my mind today. I was so angry. A single mom like me, I send my son to school. My son doesn't get sick, but he brings home the virus to me. Now I go into the hospital for three months, and I never come back out. I die. What happens to my kid? What happens to my kid? My kid goes to the state now? No family member. Why would a family member take my kid? He has COVID. I don't understand why they think this crap is okay. I am so angry. I can't see straight. We have so many things uh, to do with our kids. Then to, and, and then on top of it, we have to deal with this nonsense. This is stupid. See, the, everybody, these are the kinds of things that you have to take, into, and take control of, like what Michelle just did with our family. This is what we have to do. Okay, and what we also have to do is we have to force them to educate our kid virtually. Kim Anta, hey Kimberly, how you doing, girl? Miss you. I miss you guys so much. You have no idea. I know you guys think I don't even care, but I do. I miss you guys so much. I've been just having so so many problems, like I always do. I'm just gonna have to go and um, I'm just gonna have to go and figure this all out, and because this is gonna be my livelihood, so I gotta figure it out fast. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, um, Michelle says we need a civil unrest, full conflict to get the public needs met. These rich, yeah, mm -hmm, are running a class war. Yeah, they are. It, it's, it's, I'm telling you, I, I, call, I was so angry. I called my sister on the phone. And I was screaming. It was nine o'clock in the morning. She said, are you yelling? I said, oh God, yes. <laughs> no worries. Recording are going well. Okay, good. All right, good. Um, probably for editing purposes later. Oh yeah, I'm going to be editing and putting this on my YouTube channel that you guys don't go to. <laughs> hey guys, okay. So, I'm trying to be a YouTuber and what I want to do is both. I want to do Facebook and I want to do YouTube. And so what I need is, is help because I can keep doing this for as long as you guys want. But I can do it better. I need money to do it and YouTube will pay me, okay? But I need a thousand subscribers and I need 4,000 views on my videos as soon as I hit that mark then I can start but I need you guys to help me out and to just call people over there and stuff I'm trying to do a lot of stuff so if you guys can help me I'd really appreciate it I will do everything I can for you guys as much as I can okay but I need your help too so that's just my plea for right now so could you help me just go over subscribe to my channel um, it's special uh, special ed answers on YouTube and I put up a whole bunch of videos and I'm trying to fix stuff up make it look pretty girl and so anyway that's what I need you guys to do so to all your friends and your family I don't care I just need a thousand subscribers okay I need people looking at my channel I'm trying to make it better but I don't know what I'm doing so anyway so back to the nonsense um, and, and you're right Michelle that's what we need a civil unrest. Well, that's what's going on. It's just not going on in education. And I did see, um, what was she, the president of the teachers union, I believe, today. And she even said it was crazy um, what they're trying to do. And they say, I do all. Oh, thank you, Tess. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, you guys just put it out there as much as possible. The more I get, the better it gets for me. So anyway, I really love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Um, I, I like I said I want this to be my full-time job um, where I will do videos I'm trying to do them I'm trying to learn and it's it's a, such a huge learning curve you know everybody you go on YouTube and you see all these YouTube videos and you're like oh that's easy no it's not <laughs> it's not easy at all it's hard work I mean this video right here will take me four hours to edit 
and then I change it and I upload it. I cut it down shorter. I create more than one video from it and then I upload it to YouTube. So, and then I let you guys know that I uploaded it. So I add stuff like paperwork and stuff that we talk about. I'll add it on the YouTube channel so you guys can go get it. So, um, I am trying to give you good content and hi, Barbara. I'm trying to give you guys good content, so if you guys want to know about something like COVID-19 and what we're talking about today and how this all works, um, we need to figure out um, what some of the things that we can bring to our representatives and tell them, well, this is what I'll, I'd be willing to do with my kid. And I've talked to parents and we start stuff. We just start some stuff, that's all. They want to start some, there's going to be some. So we start giving them suggestions because they don't know. They don't know what the hell they're doing over there. So um, I'm shocked it's not happening. For, I know, I know, nothing's happening. You said special ed answers. Yes, honey, Milo, special ed answers. It's on YouTube. That's all you have to put in there and my channel will come right up. Special ed ED answers. Yeah, what we can do is, is give them some suggestions. What I wanted to know is, like a few of you answered my question about what do you know about what's going on in your state? So I think I have, I have one for Massachusetts. I had one for Ohio. And there was another one. I know there was another state. Um, but the information is out there for your state. And if you guys need to know what it is, inbox me, okay? Or like tonight, I'm going to upload this video um, in the next couple of days to my YouTube channel. And if you go to my YouTube channel and you put in a comment and you say, Tammy, I can't find it. I can't find the uh, plan for my state. Um, and then you tell me your state and I'll go in and I'll find it. It takes me like a few minutes to find it. So, because it's not that hard. But then there's other stuff out there. Um, like uh, OSAP, the uh, Office of Special Education Programs. Apparently, they also have a video for schools as to their guidance specifically for special education. See, on one hand, we're talking about when you get the plan for your, for your state, um, what you need to do is on, on the plan itself, you go straight to the special education plan section of your plan, your state's plan for education, because every single state will have it. Because, you guys, I want you to listen up. Um, did you see the OSEP letter dated July 6th for evaluations? No, Wendy. I, I, did I see that one? I can't remember. I don't think so. I saw the March 21st one, and then there was a June one. Um, but I'll go in and get that. And that's another thing, you guys. Keep, and I'm going to start doing it too. Every time I get a letter, um, I'm going to check OSEP like every other day to see what's going on. But I do know um, some, another one of you parents told me that they found um, a video um, that OSEP put together for school districts. And, but it's because, you know, it's a matter of public record, they have to give it to everybody. But schools can go in and see how you can put together a special ed program. Um, and how to implement an IEP. And another thing, I told you guys this before, when the school districts come to you and they say they wanna amend your IEP, the answer is no, okay? Because to them, amend the IEP means take out services, and then they're gonna blame it on COVID, okay? And if that's why you have to go look at the video, if I find the video, I'm gonna go on there, I'm gonna find the video and I'm gonna upload it to mine. I'll make a connection. Um, I'll Actually, I'll put a link in this video on YouTube if I find that video on OSEP, so you can just go in and click on it, okay? So there'll be a link within this video to that OSAP uh, video, okay? And and other things, that there's gonna be other stuff that I put in there, like for instance, I'm gonna go find out about, um, I got clear, okay, good. I stop now, okay, good. Um, basically what I wanted to tell you guys tonight is that um, there are plans out there and now the president, true, stay out mamas. That's right, that's exactly it. So. What you guys have to do is you have to be diligent. You have to do your due diligence. Do not rely on anybody regarding your kid's education, services, or supports. Okay, don't. We still have to write an IP. That's right. Okay, the reason why this is so important is because I want you guys to understand something. As long as a school district is opening their doors, as long as they're providing education, to anybody in the school, they have to, they must. It's illegal for them not to provide education to children with disabilities. Do you guys understand that? I want you to understand that. A school district cannot say, well, we're only offering uh, education to you know non-disabled children. As Soon as they do that, I want you to immediately contact me, okay? I've been lucky so far, nothing has changed for my, good, that's good. And it shouldn't, but they might. 
they might try to come back with an amendment. Now, OSEP said that if you want to, you can amend your kid's IEP. But it's the only way they can take away services or change how services are delivered. Now, on one hand, it's a good idea to do it. But on the other hand, because we know who these people are, because they're sneaky, no good for nothings, okay? They're just sneaky. Um, they will take away services under the pretense that, oops, I forgot, or oops, you know. And then now they've amended the IEP. If they don't deliver the service because the service is not in there, they got an out. You can't get them for denial of fate, okay? So just because they um just because they amend your iep you make sure they do not pull out not one single service for your kid they need to figure it out okay and if you go on the osep website they will tell you all about how they can deliver services because they wrote it they didn't write these how they can deliver services to us the parents they wrote all of that stuff for schools you see we can't deny fate contrary to popular belief we can't deny fate to our own children because you know why? We never signed a contract with the feds. We never signed a contract with the state. I don't know why these people think that they can fool us into believing that we can deny FAPE. The only way you can deny FAPE is if you refuse to let them evaluate when they request it. And only then can they take you to hearing to get your signature or to override consent. That's the only time they can override your consent is if you refuse to an initial evaluation or you refuse an evaluation, a reeval. That's the only time they can override consent, your consent, with a hearing. That's it. So everything else, they can't do without your consent. All right? I want you guys to understand that 100% because they will try. This is a perfect opportunity for them to try some shenanigans. Okay? Okay, it says, um, Kimberly brought up, um, we still have to write an IEP. Everything, assessments, just like Wendy just said, I'm going, I can't wait to go look at that assessments thing. Because the reason why they're writing all of these memos and stuff is because these schools are contacting OSEP, trying to figure out how they can get around IDEA. Let me tell you something else. If OSEP allows them to go we'll do a workaround with IDEA, that workaround is going to stay there, okay? They're not going to let that drop. They're, gonna, they're not going to say, well, COVID's over, so now we go back to normal. They're not going to do that. What they're going to try to do is rewrite history, okay? And they're going to try to get keep everything out so your kids don't really get anything. So by the time they get done rewriting the idea, it's not worth the paper it's written on. They've done that before, okay? It's sort of like the No Child Left Behind Act. They wrote, it's beautiful, except there's no money behind it, so the schools don't have to implement it if they don't want to. It's still a law. But the schools aren't being held responsible for the implementation of it because there's no there's no meat on the bone, so to speak. Okay? So, anywho, that's what we're doing. All right. Um, we have to we have to take control. It's just that simple. Um, so is what's going on with some of you guys? I mean, are you guys being safe? And I know Michelle is. <laughs> is anybody else being safe? Barbara? Uh, Wendy, um, are you guys being safe? Because uh, we need to know who, you know, if you guys are being okay and if everything's working out for you or you're getting the testing that you need done as far as, you know, COVID-19 as well as other testing. Um, I know in a few states, um, individuals like doctors, like in, in Pennsylvania, you can get testing done because, you know, they were on green. Yeah, you know it's really bad, you guys. So down the street from us is a city pool or town pool. It's open. They're allowing children to go swimming in this pool, and they're saying that it's so wonderful because, you know, it's so, so clean, really. I've been to pools where kids go in the town, and it's full of pee because <laughs> kids, they're kids. It's full of all kinds of stuff coming from their noses, from their, you know. I mean, it's all full of stuff. It's a Petri dish for real. <laughs> And they don't have a problem. These parents do not have a problem bringing the kids to the pool. I don't care how hot it is. Put them in the tub. That's too bad. Squirt them with some water in a spray bottle. I don't care what you have to do, but you cannot let your kid go to a pool. No, and the ocean is way better. I mean, it's still not good. You're still not six feet apart. There's still some stuff floating in there, debris and stuff, but at least there's a tide moving around. I mean, I don't get it. So anyway. Oh, you moved, Wendy? Oh, good girl. Are you, are you happy? Yes, I'm being good. Okay, Bob. 
I, was it a good move? Are you glad? Are you in the same school district, Wendy? Oh, you're still you're, you're still in uh, you're still in the same school district. Okay, all right. Are you guys um, do you guys have any questions about assessments or your rights or any of that? You guys all know that just because we have COVID nineteen, nothing's changed for your kids regarding idea and your rights and the assessments and. Yes, new district. We need to talk. Okay. All right. You want my number? Here. Here it is. Okay, guys. I work from 9 to 5. Okay? And it's iffy. So, I mean, it's 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Okay? So, if you want to call me, that's good. If you're on a different, um, and that's Eastern Standard Time. But, if you're on the West Coast or somewhere in the middle and you have a different time zone than me, then you will talk, you text me, and you tell me what time zone, and then we can set up a time, okay? Love New District, good. You know what? It could be, Wendy, a whole new beginning for you, um, and it depends on the district. I'm telling you, it depends on the district. You can you can, you can, can do three, a 360, at least a 180 with a new district. It's sad that people have to move in order to get what they need for their kid, but sometimes it works. Um, Michelle says, right, and if you go to mediation, you open the door for them to get an override decision because you consented to a third party resolve. Slippery slope, people. I say no to mediation. No, 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 <laughs> don't say no to mediation. There's no slippery slope. Mediation is mediation, done deal. They can't do shit. If you don't agree with mediation, you don't agree, you walk out. I'm done, mediation done. I can't, you come to the mediation, you have what you want and they have what they want and then what we do is we meet in the middle okay i've had lots and lots of successful mediations where we we file for a hearing and then we didn't go it's because i got everything i needed for my clients so mediations are good the goal of a hearing is to not go and that's why i tell you guys when you're going to do a hearing barbara i have to ask you a question speaking of that i want to use your case to show you guys how to file a complaint. Can I do it, Barbara? You know, the complaint we were talking about? <laughs> I want to do it um, as a video. What do you guys, you guys want to see me do that? Let me know. Um, I forgot to ask you that before. But anyway, yeah, um, you, it's not a slippery slope. If, if the parties don't come to an agreement, then you can just, um, if the two parties don't come to an agreement, then you're done. You just walk away, you go back to a hearing, okay? But let's say you do mediation and part of the mediation agreement you guys agreed to. The other part you didn't. Now that's the part you can continue with the hearing. You just let the hearing officer know if you're in a hearing. You let the hearing officer know that, or, or the state investigator, well, this part, of the, um, this part of the complaint was resolved, but this part wasn't. The part that wasn't resolved, you keep it moving, okay? But the part that was, you go. Now, what schools like to do is, they like to use it as leverage. So, you do have to be careful. Because you, if once you sign mediation, you're waving away everything from the day, any, any wrongdoing they did. You're agreeing to accept this for that. Okay? You're agreeing to accept what they're offering at mediation. And then you're agreeing to release them of all, everything that you wrote up about them and anything that you might have forgotten from the date you signed that um, mediation agreement backwards to uh, backwards a year. Okay? No, backwards for eternity, all the way back, okay? But when you go to mediation, if it's for, um, let me see. If you go to mediation, you, everything that you want is from back, is from the day you signed the mediation backwards, okay? So you have to be careful about what you're agreeing to. Now, the cool thing about a mediation agreement is this. Let's say the school district agrees to give your kids compensatory services, one times 30 speech and language services for, you know, 18 um, hours of speech and language service, 18 hours, okay? And then they don't. You skip your happy butt right over to the nearest courthouse and get an enforcement order on that mediation agreement. Do not go back to the state. Okay, your mediation agreement is a legally binding contract. You don't have to go back to the state. I don't, unless you can show me a law in your state that says a mediation agreement must go back to the state. It's a mediation agreement. 
You can go back to the, you can go to the judge, okay? Yeah, um, Paula, if you're in Massachusetts, I bet I know, you tell her that, um, all your, do me a favor, contact OSA, put it in writing, and um, Paula, are you from Massachusetts? If you're from Massachusetts, you contact Rebecca Wallowunder and you say, so my, um, can a school district file for a hearing because the parent rejected the IEP? Okay.